name is Tomasz Juczyk and I'm data scientist in TIPCO. Uh, we know that uh, TIPCO Spotfire is a great interactive visualization tool. And in addition to that, it has possibility to use data functions, which means it can call external scripts, which can do additional analytics and compute additional results, which can be visualized uh, in Spotfire. You might have already used um, R, TER data functions or Python data functions, which are about calling scripting languages uh, directly from Spotfire. Um, but today, as was said, uh, we will discuss and show another type of integration now with the TIPCO data science and more precisely with the Statistica component. So we will show you uh, how to use and construct a Statistica data function. The difference is, uh, as you will see, that in Statistica you can build your data function without need of scripting and only using uh, graphical workflows. So the objective of this, of this uh, part is to demonstrate uh, we have built from scratch example how this Spotfire Statistica integration works. So at first we will build a simple workspace in Statistica, a graphical workflow, and then we will call this workspace as a data function in Spotfire on a completely different data set. And then we build some visualizations on the information which we get uh, from this data function. So let me jump to Statistica to introduce it a bit. So Statistica is an advanced analytics platform where you can implement the whole data analytics workflow, starting typically with data loading, data cleaning, data transforms, um, continuing with application of various statistical methods, uh, which are giving some insight uh, from your data. You can build predictive models and you can save the results. What you can see here on the screen is a interface called workspace where you can implement your data science workflow. Um, each node is one functionality of the software and nodes can be logically arranged one after each other according to what you want to achieve. So Statistica is also known that it has a huge amount of functionalities and, and options, which means that uh, there is also a huge base for of building blocks for data functions in Spotfire. So let us start, not with that sophisticated example, but with something simple. So we will build our workspace from scratch. We are opening blank workspace and we will insert here file. Let's say this file. It's a data about the wines. We have 178 wines and some properties of the wines. Let us rename it to data. And then we will be choosing the functionalities which we need to, to build our workflow. So at first we will need a node for selecting variables. Uh, this will select variables for the next analysis. And in our example, we will do simply a cl clustering example. So let us define the nodes. And first we need to choose variables. We are choosing star, which means that all variables are chosen. This is important when you right star, it means exactly that. This is important because uh, later on we will have a different data source, so selecting all vari variables is really uh, important. It's, it's not um, dependent to the data which we have uh, here. In a clustering node, we can define various uh, parameters uh, to initiate, initialize the algorithm. We can maybe use more detailed uh, output. And we, in the second tab, we will choose that we want the cross-validation, which means that algorithm will choose uh, by itself what is the optimal number of clusters. So let us run it. And it will compute, uh, compute the clustering. So it will create a groups for our wines data. If we look at the results, so we will see that we have the original data and in the end we have a classification and distance to centroid, which can be used for anomaly detection, for example. So final classification, we have seen, we, have, we can see three clusters are chosen as optimal one. If we go to reporting tables, we have also some additional results uh, computed from this clustering. So we have some profiles of the centroids and some graphs and other tables, which we can also use in our data function. 
And in the end, we need to decide what will be the output of our data function. So let us say that the output would be only the final two variables in there, not the whole data. We will simply attach these two variables to our existing data in Spotify later on. So that's our data function. It's defined. So let us save it. Clustering, let's call it clustering. Okay, so it's prepared and now we are jumping to Spotfire. It's it's empty, we have only loaded one data set and you can see it's a different data set, it's a different, uh, it's, a, it's a data set about the countries. So we have a countries and we have some information about the countries like population, area, GDP and so on. So we want to apply the same algorithm on our on our um, nation's data and we will do that through the data function. So to, to make it available, we go to tools and Statistica. This is a um, extension loaded uh, from, uh, which you can download from a delivery for free. And this extension, you can define there, where is your data function and other, other things. So I'm loading the data function from local disk. It's the workspace. So it's not the code, uh, some, some script. Uh, it, it's the set of these nodes um, together. And once it's loaded, I will, I will define what uh, will be, what I will be using uh, in, in, my, in my analysis from that workflow because the workflow can be more complex. Okay. So I will be defining inputs in our, in our data, in our workspace, we have only one input, so that's clear. For outputs, we can choose uh, output from every, every node and also from reporting documents. We have decided we want subset. We do not want select variables and from uh, the k-means uh, clustering node, maybe we would like to have centroids and maybe some pure statistical information about um, the ANOVA tests. So let us choose these. And in the middle, there is a parameter, parameter section. So you can also choose uh, or transfer some parameters. So you can um, run your works, workspace with parameters. We do not need anything from the subset, but we would like maybe, you can see that this structure is the same as the structure of um, the, the, the parameters in this, uh, in this node. So it might be useful if the user will say if user wants cross-validation or not. And maybe if a uh, um, user doesn't want cross-validation, maybe he want to decide how many clusters will be constructed. So for that purpose, we will need to expose to Spotfire two parameters. One is this cross-validation and number of clusters. And that's it. Done. And in the end, the last step is is a window which is the same as uh, as, you, as you might see in, in other um, data functions. It's a de definition of what will be transferred to, to the data function. So matching the inputs and outputs. Inputs, uh, the data, we will be sending the nation's data, but not the whole data set, but only several variables. Of course, we do not want cluster according to the name of the country or region. We want to cluster according to the measured uh, features of the country. A number of clusters and uh, cross validation. It, it's, it's, it, these are these two parameters. We do not want to specify them now, but if you want to create, for example, some action controls for that, you can, you can assign and change uh, these parameters as well. So we will not use them at the moment. And th then we need to assign where to uh, where to put the output um, subset. It's these two important columns, and we will uh, add these columns to our nations table, which means this option for centroids. We will create a new table, and for ANOVA table, we will create a new table as well. So it's 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 now defined, and uh, the data function is triggered. Um, the, the input data is uh, changed to our new input data 
and you can see it's it's computed now um, and we will see in a minute what are what are the results we should have in our in our um, data set now two new variables and also we will have the two new tables in a, as, as a tables which we can use for for uh, our visuals so if we look at the, our nation's data we can see we have your final classification and distance to center rate if we look closely to final classification we can see that it's not in very nice format so let us change it to zero decimal places that is better and distance to center rate is okay so we have some new information which we can play with and now we, we want to see some uh, information about the clusters first so we are going to find a classification we can choose uh, some recommended visuals like this one maybe we are interested about uh, some information about uh, clusters and regions which can be this stream up and if we will use different table we would like to um, to show or to expose the information about centroids for clusters because this is some some overall information about the centers about the, what is the typical representative of, of the cluster so we would like to have that let me arrange this a bit i will change colors to have colors according to the clusters in my visuals to have everything same in the same colors okay so from the first graph we can see that we have created uh, the algorithm decided that three three clusters is, is the best number of clusters from the second one maybe we can see that uh, in, in first cluster there are typically uh, countries from Africa and from the last like uh, the profiles of, of, uh, of um, for for each cluster we can see that when one when uh, the cluster one has low values cluster three has uh, large values and other ways around so um, and, and the orange one is somewhere in the middle so this is like on the several clicks we have we have some basic information how our clusters looks like and now we will in addition to that use also or look also at the information which we did not use yet and that's uh, distance to centroids we have we have said that it's it can be um, used for uh, detecting some anomalies so what what the recommendation engine here uh, recommends it's a histogram okay you want that and interesting is that there is another recommendation where there is a distance to center it together with population and population is is not checked so this is um, recommended maybe because there is some uh, correlation between distance to center rate and population so uh, let us use this recommendation uh, we will again insert here the same colors maybe we will create this and maybe in the end we will create a detailed visualization some table when we will be marking some points uh, some countries we would like to know which countries they are so if we mark for example the countries which are on with with the higher value of distance to center rate we can see that these are also with a high population and there is there is the list of these which which was uh, chosen as, as uh, outlying ones or with a large distance to the center of the cluster so this uh, the left side is about the clusters the right side is about the anomalies um, what we have not used yet uh, is the search table which is about ANOVA measurements so if we click quickly go there so this is purely statistical table uh, and uh, the p-value here, me here means the lower lower is the p-value the more important is uh, actual variable for distinguishing the clusters so if we look at population we have large p-value so 
population in, is not much distinguishing the clusters, but if we look at uh, infant mortality, for example, uh, this is completely different story. So we can, because we have interactive visuals, we can play with that and we can look uh, population really, we cannot see some uh, pattern of, of the clusters, but if we change it to infant mortality, we can see immediately that uh, cluster one is on the, with, with the high values and cluster three is with the, with the small values. So that was a quick example, uh, really quick. Uh, we can play with these data much longer, uh, but to summarize what we have seen here, um, I have shown you how you can get simply some additional information for your visuals, for your investigation of the data through the statistical data function. Also, we have seen how easily and quickly you can leverage Spotify recommendations. Everything was done only on a simple example, but uh, potential combination of these two typical products is huge. So I hope uh, this presentation was useful for you and I hope you will find this potential in your use cases. Mm -hmm.